All right, welcome to the latest episode of the Organic Fitness Podcast with me, Old Man Power. Bish bash bash. We have got our latest episode all about, okay, touching specifically on growing. A lot of people that I mentor and coach are extremely interested. Nonetheless, that's great because we have to either cut out the middleman, go straight to country markets, but you can get even get a fresher nap because nutrition is key in overall optimal health. So we got questions coming in. This is a Q&A style based episode from Emma. Okay, the likes of first question we'll be touching on is cut and come again. Which veg and salads can I do it? And leafy greens can I do it with? Then we have what can I grow now? Coming in on Facebook. That question is from Cara. Then tomatoes have curly leaves. Is this a problem? Everything else is looking sweet. And then the final one is organic fitness foods that I recommend. So to eat and grow. So we'll go straight on into it. Get hands dirty. And I'm going to recommend the foods and the greens that you can do for cut and come again. Salads, all salads can be used for cut and come again. Right now, we're in summer. So the resulting fact of that is you have to grow with the seasons as opposed to against. So leafy salads such as Lala Rasa was a really good one. It's a dark red, high in antioxidants. I recommend you to add dark colored foods to your diet and things that you grow. So... When you're looking at leafy salads, you can also have cos, you could also, you name the lettuce, Tom Tom, there's so many different green lettuces. You can inevitably harvest those between 20 centimeters from the ground level, grabbing the head of it, getting a knife and cutting straight into a bag. Couldn't get fresher, especially if you're doing it in the morning. Why? Because it retains its water a hell of a lot better because the sun hasn't taken out the moisture from the leaves. Remember that, that's important. Don't be doing it at lunchtime because it won't last as long because it won't have as much moisture in its leaves. So other leaves that you most certainly do cut and come again would be chard and spinach, perpetual spinach as opposed to the annual spinach. Perpetual spinach is broad leafed and they're both in the same family. So you can most certainly do that. So those things do, I suppose, take a high percentage of the leaves from that plant. So it can stunt it. So there are other options as the individual leaves could be taken off, but the lettuce I highly recommend for cut and come again. And it's a quicker way of harvesting your greens especially the spinach and it's typically done on small scale farms or if you wanted inevitably to have a quicker crop come back why because there's more leaves leaves actually produce the food for the plant making it in photosynthesis learn that back in fourth year in school remember it and never forget it so those i suppose are the greens that most certainly can tolerate cut and come again so there's your spinach any of your greens and then what you can also do is a great thing coming into winter. I wouldn't recommend until August to start sowing these is oriental salads. Oriental salads are super beneficial. Why? Because they're from the brassica family. This is your, your rocket or arugula. Called, it's the same thing, but called different things in different countries. <clears throat> you have uh, the antioxidant sulfurophane found in that. It's full of chlorophyll again an antioxidant reduces stress in the body you need to add these to your diet and most certainly remember that there are other cut and come again salads such as winter purslane this is one of my favorite if i had to pick a, a salad that's one of my favorites it would most certainly be winter purslane winter purslane is also commonly known as miner's lettuce miner's lettuce it was given that name when people came out of the mines <clears throat> because they went straight for this type of lettuce. Why? Because it's extremely meaty. Okay, for those of you that are vegetarians and or vegans, I'm neither. I'm for optimal health. I just put out this information so where people can choose and pick a diet that they suit them and their lifestyle and everything else in between, or they're growing it. It's getting. And it comes into abundance in the likes of the early spring but it's sown in and around September. And it has the great advantage of giving you umpteen amount of these large leaves that can be simply cut and come again. You would look like there be, wouldn't be even an ounce of a leaf left to produce it. It's self-food from true photosynthesis, but it certainly will. Those are the three main things I recommend you to do cut and come again. So you get your hands on winter purse lane. Claytonia is also another name on it. Or minor's letters. See, the fact is that those things you most certainly can add to your growing this coming year get your hands on seeds 
bish bash bosh it's a winner and it does sell seed and it'll be then you're going to have those and you might even have to buy seeds next year depending on the size of your polytunnel but that's i suppose the next thing i'm going to touch on growing things and getting yourself either a small glass house or a small polytunnel can gain major advantages why because you can have small growth in the likes of your oriental salads oriental salads are able to tolerate the likes of this cut and come again system and ones that i'm going to recommend that are from the Brassica family as i said arugula or rocket then you have mensuna you have tatsoi <clears throat> those are three small oriental salad leaves that are able to tolerate the cold why is that because they're from that Brassica family and they're related to broccoli broccoli being the superfood that people talk about yes but broccoli is an absolute not a fresh that i would recommend to grow just due to the fact that it takes a much longer growing season and if you're growing in a small area it's taking up a huge amount of space it's literally if you were to put your hands left and right your shoulders and your head there inclusive that's how big big a broccoli plant can get and you simply have that tiny small main center sprig of a head of a broccoli one of those so it's not your best crop get your bang for your buck <clears throat> if you're looking for vitamin c magnesium and iron yep all those brassicas have those in itself and that antioxidant sulfurophane that has been proven to reduce stress on the body increase your energy levels and and serious levels reducing as well uh, reduce what the signs of serious chronic illnesses such as cancer it's a beauty add it to your diet gain advantage of it those are the vegetables i'm sorry those are the crops that you can grow in the likes of your pies on them because they can grow throughout that winter slow incremental uh growth and mensuna being the best of those so mensuna again is a frilly leaved oriental salad that is lovely in not only stir fries and or in any salad and i, I love salad type lunches just due to the fact that it's most certainly something i recommend because most people are not eating enough greens enough greens yes yes oh yeah and then just touching on that antioxidant sulfurophane sulfurophane is something that gets deactivate it when cooked so typically if you are having some of those greens it's recommended to get them organically sorry get them organically is the first thing but get uh, to either eat them raw and or add in mustard seeds because that's what they're growing from oriental salads are going from mustard seeds are small tiny little dotted pilled shaped seeds that you can crush and get separately and sprinkle onto your salads after or your stir fries after to reactivate that antioxidant. I do love the science behind foods that are beneficial towards you and your overall health, especially if you're growing your own, maximize the benefits of it, lads, and put this into practice. So what you're sowing, there's two different things now I'll just touch on with suppose your cut and come again salads that I've mentioned here. So your leafy salad that you're sowing right now, it being midsummer. Those salads are difficult to germinate, but those are just something that's difficult doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Those seeds are left directly. I'm just using this cup as an example. I've dropped the pen. So this cup is your pot. You drop those seeds, typically three or four seeds per pot or cell, depending if you're doing cells, leaving it on top, small indent, seeds sit there water those and in three to five days you should have a germination rate if you don't what first thing you may, may have happened is they may have dried out if they have dried out they're no good to you next thing is a lot of people are covering their seeds covering their seeds with the likes of those leafy salads leafy salads such as we'll call it a uh, lot of rasa love a lot of rasa green a lot of rasa oak leaf is another one that comes to mind really beneficial a salad bowl i need another really good one all varieties you can get so when you are so in those types of leafy salads, they need light to germinate, as opposed to flipping on its head. Oriental salads, they like to be buried. Okay, a lot of people say, how deep? Your index finger, to the first knuckle on your finger, that deep. That is 10 to 20 centimeters deep, 10 to 20 millimeters centimeters, 10 to 20 millimeters deep in your pots. Those are the two differences. So if you're sowing seeds now, especially leafy salads, and you're putting them into the ground, they have no light, they will not germinate. If you're sowing oriental salads, they will most certainly pop up through the soil or compost that you're currently using. And you're going to have yourself a classic 
crop coming in to those winter months oriental salads for the win why do we not grow them oriental salads in the summer more so the fact is they like the cold yes and they don't like excessive amount of heat if you grow them in the summer months rock and arugula more often than not they're going to bolt bolt means that they will flower all the energy goes into the production of the flower what comes out of the flower the seeds it's trying it's stressed excessive amount of stress means it's trying to bolt trying to run away trying to produce an offspring and you don't want that because then all the beneficial energy is taken away from the leaves goes up to the flower so as you watch on youtube my hands go left and right for the leaves and the bowl and the flower comes up down to the center so moving on to the next question we have got is coming in from cara okay cara o'donnell what can i grow now okay we are midsummer, so i'll tell you firstly it's important to touch on what you can't grow. You can't currently grow tomatoes unless they're in the ground and growing. You can't currently grow cucumbers. But these are things I do recommend, but just remember that they have a longer growing season and it's worth noting that you should focus in on definitely any of your dark leafy greens such as oriental salads that we touched on sown in September, but even more so right now, Grow yourself some rainbow chard and spinach. Rainbow chard are unbelievable for, I suppose, just simple growers starting off beginners. And definitely want to recommend another one to you that you may have not heard of before. Microgreens. Microgreens are something that are an immature plant that have higher antioxidants than a fully grown vegetable. You can grow any which way of a vegetable you like. They typically only grow yay high as big as your thumb can be grown on a windowsill if you have minimal amount of space growing on a balcony and you can put them into smoothies put them and sprinkle on to your lunch and or dinners and it's something that i recommend why because everybody can do that you can get a harvest of microgreens from typically ones that i recommend would be sunflowers sunflowers are really easy you can also do a chard and there is red uh, red radish is the one that I currently grow and use and sell to restaurants so those are things you can sow a seed cover and I do have a YouTube video on that you definitely check that out on my channel Coleman Power Organic Fitness a fly just flew past me there trying to catch him uh, Organic Fitness on YouTube and it shows you exactly how much compost to use what trays I recommend I recommend getting trays from Fruit Hill Farm they're based in Ireland but they also ship me wide you get compost being class man a high quality compost is important why because germination of these seeds is important to have uniformity so ease of harvesting so you're sowing your seeds directly over that you're covering them with a light sprinkler compost different to your leafy salads and every day will come through that compost and in as little as 10 days but typically if you have a heated bench you can get them up to in 10 days but if you don't have a heated bench you can put them on a warm windowsill you can get them in 12 days or 15 and then it depends on the temperatures of that coming into the window or in that glass house or greenhouse or polyton where you are currently growing those are a couple of things that i do recommend so spring onions spring onions are and can be popped in i suppose if you have a polyton right now they're a relatively easy crop they have very little pests and diseases but polytunnel is where your best bang for your buck is with, I suppose, anything that you need to speed up the process of. Whenever, if you're looking for potatoes at coming up into the Christmas months, you can grow those too. It's worth noting that it's getting an earlier crop variety, such as Golden Wanderers, maybe will be a variety that I would recommend. And in on top of that, going back, I suppose, towards veg that you most certainly can grow yourself is off the top of my head. I'm going to lean towards the French beans that I did sow in March. But inevitably, if we are going to have this Indian summer, you may be able to get a crop of those. And those are certainly a vegetable that I highly recommend people to add to their diet. They contain protein. They contain fiber. Two things people are not eating enough of. When you grow these your own, you can most certainly try. And I do recommend. Why? Because they are a crop that can be grown vertically. So that means you maximize the space of, I suppose, your polytunnel or greenhouse where you're growing these food items. So. Those are things that I do recommend and beetroot and turnip are also things that I do 
uh, start sowing now, and you then again more, most certainly can gain the advantage of beetroot being high in antioxidants and antioxidants being anthrocyanins. Anthrocyanins, I forgot the word. Anthrocyanins can improve your blood flow, and a lot of people are taking beetroot shots. Okay, skip that in itself. Gain the advantage of some fiber, which is good for your gut health. Winning on a Wednesday. This podcast comes out on a Thursday, but if you're listening to it on a Wednesday, that just rhymes suited this right here, right there. So next question in is touching on tomatoes have curly leaves. Is this an issue? But the rest of the plants are looking fine. Those were the general censuses of the message that I got sent in. So curling leaves signifies that it may have a slight deficiency in the soil, but inevitably it will still be able to produce a crop from your tomatoes. Tomatoes are one of my favorite crops. Why? Because they're sown in February and I sow mine on Valentine's Day. Why? Because I love tomatoes. So you sow them in February, 14th of February. Hope that's Valentine's Day it is. And you look after them, you walk, you first see, you water them, they germinate, you transplant, you weed, and you're taking these side shoots off them. And when you start to see, I suppose, signs of curling leaves this may be down to the manure that has been used in your soil or in the ground because typically on where people get manure it's on non-organic farms and the likes of either a form of harsh chemicals such as roundup or some people are using gallop to spray off fields and the animals are then consuming that and then it comes out in their waste these can cause excessive amount of curling of leaves which typically you see on your tomato plants so if you could at all possibly try and get yourself some clean fresh organic manure you're going to gain the advantage of a healthier plant why because if you have curling leaves the leaves are not able to produce as much food for itself such as we touched on photosynthesis and it would be then you most certainly could have a healthier crop to produce more nutrient dense tomatoes for yourself when people see these uh, curled leaves it's not something to be excessively worried about <clears throat> necessarily <clears throat> excuse me necessarily it will still produce a crop it's just that you could maximize the benefits and the yield that you would get off your tomatoes and there are things you can also do to help with this during the early stages of the growth things that i do and incorporate into firstly my soil will be seaweed seaweed is another way of getting away from manures why because it is like literally a multivitamin it has over 21 different micronutrients and it also is uh, it contains nitrogen nitrogen is for leafy growth leafy growth especially at the early stage of your plant development is important and it also can act as a weed suppressant for those of you that are close to the sea the ocean collecting it is something that I do that's stuff not living washed up seaweed can be I suppose something that is in abundance and therefore collecting with your bucket and putting onto like your the tomatoes which inevitably is again going to help it grow taller go faster go quicker produce more flowers when you have more flowers remember the fact that every flower turns into a fruit and that is what we call it the golden nugget of the more flowers you have the taller the stronger the healthier your plant is the less curled up leaves it has on it the healthier a crop it is going to produce so going on to i suppose the organic fitness foods that i recommend first of which is most certainly things that can grow vertical so we've touched on french beans so french beans just to recap it on are something that you sow a seed i sow mine in march sow a seed sow in five around one individual stick stem and tie in a string line from your stick to the ground or bamboo all the way to the top making a string line for all the world you don't have a, a, a string line running from the top to your bottom you don't have par bars going across left to right crop bars you can make one just simply like you would make a washing line one end you most certainly have a post here other end on the, the top or the bottom of your python string line top to toe you have yourself a washing line that you can tie strings up to and french beans are something that climb all the way from the ground to <clears throat> the top of your python they're going to again be pollinated by bees so you have to have your doors open or have some sort of ventilation for them to do their work we cannot live without the bees so cucumber plants are another thing they recommend and persandra f1 
is the variety that I recommend to everyone. It's a small baby cucumber, no bigger than the likes of your hand. It's cute, it's dainty, and it's, it contains a high percentage of water, antioxidants, and fiber. These are simple things. And with the cucumbers, it doesn't, it's, not, it's like a variety that's not, it's not uh, full of prickles, it's smooth. And I like things, kind of the song that comes to mind, because it's a smooth operator. Yeah, I love those smooth cucumbers. They're in season right now, they're in season. I'm doing a beach workout very, very soon. Absolutely, positively, people going to that will gain the advantage of those. I wish I had right now and one right now. I don't, for those of you on YouTube. So the French beans, I'm going to recommend a variety. It's called Cobra. Cobra is a black bean uh, when you sow it, and then you will get a super crop. It's a high yielding, and I found these through help of another individual who I'll mention here on this podcast. He was my mentor and my coach and my lecturer through a college. His name is Klaus Leitenberg. He has several books on growing that I do and recommend to anybody else who's interested in that. He's based in Leitrim. And if you're chatting to him, tell him I sent him your way. Tell him I said hi. Give him a high five. I mean, keep your distance. And tell him I said, well, if you're speaking to him, good man. I highly recommend him because he taught me everything I know. He's a good fella. Uh, other things I do recommend organic fitness foods will be squash. Squash can grow also up a string line and they're in the same family as courgettes. They, I suppose, are broad leaved. Inevitably, you can have them sprawling along the floor if you're growing them outside because they're going to act as a weed suppressant and they're going to a variety that I'm going to recommend you is most certainly Crown Prince. They are deliciously filled, high beta carotene, vitamin A filled vegetable that is going to benefit your skin. They're a simple crop, very little problem with slugs or any other pests in between. Pop in a seed, bish bash bosh, few days later, you have yourself for the winter months, squash, wherever you have them, put them out into loads of space, meter spacings, meter spacings for the likes of your squash. And then there would be another thing that I highly recommend organic fitness foods for people to grow would it be fruit bushes and most certainly an apple tree. Fruit is one of the things that is quite easily grown and things that I must recommend is also when you take fruit off a tree, it's important to give back nutrients to that, whether it be in the form of the seaweed, which I also do recommend. Uh, we can sprinkle around eggshells, which is calcium, can be further broken down. And also then act, uh, I also do recommend if you have fruit trees to put a sprinkling of cardboard down, sprinkling of cardboard, put cardboard down, whether it's mulched or not, it's in it. on top of that, you have cardboard on top of your soil, then you have wood chips, wood chips then, will inevitably act as your weed suppressant. And what you're gonna do then is you're gonna help in the likes of microorganisms such as worms and even the ones we can't even see to inevitably be walking their way down through the root zone of your plant, whether it be a fruit bush or a fruit tree. So what ends up happening then is you have to put your finger down directly in through it, as opposed to if you had it in directly in grass, it's much harder to drive your finger down through grass as opposed to the soft area root zone where the plant has the majority of its feeder roots and that's what you want. So if you have softer ground in and around the base of your tree, it will also help in the production of a healthier tree. Healthier tree takes up more vitamins and minerals, more vitamins and minerals, healthier crop, less likely to have pests and diseases, bish, bash, bosh, you're on an absolute winner. So grow on either gooseberry bushes, there's different varieties. There's a uh, pink Himalayan, I get from English Fruit Nurseries based in Wexford. Look out for those. You can also grow the green gooseberries, a little bit tartar, but you can also make jam out of them. In on top of that, red currants, black currants, white currants. I love those. Add those to your diet. Strawberries, that's so important as well. All of those are in season right now. Get your hands on them. And most certainly, if you don't grow your own, buy them organic. Why? Because they are part of the fruit that come into contact with the flesh. And we're typically eating that and you are the end consumer of any harsh chemicals that are applied to the fruits or vegetables that you consume. And then with the likes of the apple trees, that sow them in the dormant season. The dormant season is the, typically the winter months. And I sow mine in January and I also do my pruning in January. So in about three years, you have 100. So in three years, you'll have the first of its decent amount of fruits coming into fruition and then on top of that in about five years your tree grow m9 so don't grow too tall for you that determines its root stock size m9 is one of the dwarf size trees goes no higher than 10 foot so if you 
want to harvest your own apples without getting up a ladder, I highly recommend you to grow M9 rootstock fruit and trees and grow old traditional varieties. Why? Because we've lost, I suppose, a lot of the taste and the flavor from those. It might have a little bit of a snout on them because that's a typical old traditional variety that people can grow and gain the advantage of. Again, apples being a super easy one and something that's very, very doable, whether in a pot, whether it be in part, if you're settled in a house, part of your back garden. The idea is that they're a natural prebiotic, which aid in gut health. They are high in antioxidants, they're full of vitamin C. I recommend fruit to each and everybody that I train, a coach, a mentor on the organic fitness program. And they're something you can do yourself. Everybody can grow an apple tree. Can't grow an apple tree, you're in trouble. Call me. <laughs> so, so those are this week's questions. I did this typically off the bat of questions that came in from social media, whether that's in on Coleman Power Instagram, whether that's Coleman Power on Organic Fitness on TikTok, my YouTube or my website. And other than that, you ask the questions. I answer them here on the show. And if you want to shout out, hit me up with those questions. Bish bash bosh. Thanks for listening to this week's episode specifically on, we touched on a couple of different health benefits of foods on organic growing. So stay tuned, stay classy and keep it organic.